Okay, now we're going to move on to creating a basic app in Visual Studio 2017. The point is, is not to create a uh, full-featured app here. We're just going to show the basics, show you the tool windows and buttons you'd use typically when you're creating an app in Visual Studio. And again, um, there's a nice resource that I wrote, a uh, feature tour of Visual Studio that you might want to check out if you get a chance. It goes through lots more than just what I'm covering here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to the demo where we're going to create a project using a template. As you can see, we're in empty Visual Studio again. There's no solution in the Solution Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and create a new project. We'll go ahead and use the Create New Project link. We'll go to, again, we'll do a C Sharp uh, app, and we'll do a Windows Universal blank app. We'll need to choose the target. We'll just go ahead and use the defaults. And we're in the app. It's ready for us to go right now. But before we move on, I want to show you a little bit about what you see here in, on the screen. These particular windows are called tool windows. There's properties window, solution explorer, and there's a whole other host of windows here under view menu. For example, there's a class view window, server explorer, cloud explorer, and so forth. Some windows only show up when you need them, like the output window or error list. Those occur when you run the program, and it will show the program output or errors um, when, when they occur. And some are always up, but like Solution Explorer, although you could close it by closing the X. But uh, the nice thing about it is that you, if you don't like the layout, you can move it around. So you just grab it by clicking it on the title and dragging. And you can see that there's little docking areas here that are showing up on the screen. These little uh, indicators show where the window will go when you drop it. In other words, when you stop left clicking it. So if I wanted it to appear over here, for example, instead of over there, I could just drop it there. If I don't like that, I can drag it back and dock it right up here. So feel free to customize the UI to your heart's content. Another thing that you'll see in Visual Studio is the main toolbar right here across the top. This will change depending on what you've selected and the type of project you're running, the language you've chosen, and, and so forth. But it'll typically have you know, things like new project, open file, and save, save all. These are your, your uh, run menu uh, options here. You can choose to do a debug run or, or a release build. You can also go to a configuration manager and set up a custom configuration. You can choose the uh, type of system you want to run on, like ARM or x86. And this is your run button right here. This is where you would run your program when it's ready to go. OK, next we'll show. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, play around with some code. So in, in the uh, Windows uh, Universal app, blank app, it comes with a main page XAML file. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that to open it. And you can see it opens up here on the left with this tab. Certain files, if you just select them, it will show them on the screen as a right tab. That means you haven't double clicked it to open it yet, but you can still view the contents that way. So in, in this main page, we're, this is uh, the designer. In other words, this is the visual thing that you will see on the screen once you run it. This is the underlying code underneath it. In this case, it's XAML code, but you can scroll through it. They're in two separate panes, and you can resize the window as you like. What we're going to do is go to, the, to uh, another tool window called the toolbox. This is on the left side, and we'll click it to pop it open. And you can see that it populates with some controls for the, for the uh, XAML forms. You can add pointers and buttons and checkboxes and so forth. In this case, we're just going to add a button. To do this, I'm just going to left click it, drag it, and then drop it onto the designer. Now, it's kind of hard to see here, so I'm going to zoom in on it by using the little zoom menu. And now you can see the button. This shows the the measurements from the edges. These are little sizing handles. So for example, if you want it to be a little longer, whatever, you can drag and drag it, click and drag it to the size you want. And most importantly, you can see that it added a new line to the XAML file beneath. 
called button. This describes how to create this button up here in the, in the designer. So in other words, this is sort of the recipe for the, for the button, and here's the actual button. So if you want to change it, you just change the code down here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is add a title to it. It's getting that from this text right here. So what we're going to do is change this to something else like um, thing. And you can see that it reflects in the name of the button above in the designer. You can also manually change the horizontal alignment, the margins, etc. But we're going to go ahead and leave those as they are for now. And this is, of course, just one control out of many. Right now, we just have a plain button on a form. It's not going to do anything when you click it. To do that, you need to add a, you know, what's called a click event handler and have code that would run when that thing is clicked. But for this, we're just going to keep it simple. So once we've got our quote unquote program done, we're ready. We've changed some code here, so we'll go ahead and run it by clicking the Run button up here. You can alternatively click F5, press the F5 key to run too. You can see that a new window appeared called Output, and this is showing the progress of the build below. You can see here it says Build is started. Now it started deploying it. It goes through some internal things, and then eventually we should see the form appear has an X on it right now. There we go. And we can see our thing button. And we can click it. And it doesn't do anything yet, but that's because we haven't added anything to it yet. But you get the idea. The point is, is that you have a web form with a control on it that you added, and you change the name on it. You literally just kind of do this same thing over and over until you get an entire app running. So um, this just gives you a, an idea of what, what, what to expect. To stop the program, you can do it a couple ways. One way is just to close the form, which is this X in the corner. But before we do that, I want to show you what's going on in the background in Visual Studio. Visual Studio is actually running right now, and you can see that the diagnostic tools are recording exactly how much memory is being used, what events are occurring, etc. This helps you, uh, you know, debug your program while it's running. There's also some windows that appeared like watch window and, and watch windows and, and that sort of thing. You can set breakpoints in the code and do all sorts of other debugging things. And we have uh, videos on that and lots of topics on how to debug. In addition, you can see just like VCR controls, there's a stop button or a break button. In this case, we just want to end the program, so we're going to click stop. So just like stopping a videotape, it stops it. And we're back into the designer again. And we still have the output window showing, which we don't really need, and it's taking up some real estate, so I'll just go ahead and close it. In addition, I wanted to show you some, uh, some features in our code editor that are pretty nice. So for example, if you look under this XAML file, there is a CS file, which stands for C-sharp. And you remember when I told you earlier, if you just click a file, it gives you a preview, and you can see the tab here. If I double-click it, it opens it up. And if you can tell, there's different colorization depending on the element that you've uh, added. So for example, comments in C-sharp at least, have triple slashes, and they're in green. You can see statements are in blue and so forth. In addition, there's navigation aids such as uh, expand and collapse. And you have guidelines here called structure visualizer where you can see like where your closing and opening braces are at. So it makes it easier to make sure that they're lined up and that you have what you need. So to recap, We've created a new C-Sharp Universal Windows project in Visual Studio. We viewed its code. We added a control to the designer. We changed some of the XAML code and then ran the project.